Hello Internet, I'm Matt Haas. This is Awesome Wood Things. I recently purchased this very large and very scary one inch roundover bit. You cannot use something this size freehand, so I needed a router table. Rather than buy a very expensive router table, and they are very expensive, I built my own on the cheap. Now, just because this didn't cost much doesn't mean it isn't accurate and it doesn't mean it isn't safe. It will not tip over, it will not move when you're using it, you can clamp it to the desk, and it is dead level, and this Craig router plate is dialed in perfectly. The wood will not get hung up when you're moving it past the router bit. Stick around, I'll show you how to make this yourself. I start with a piece of 3 quarter inch MDF. This material is incredibly flat. I also cut down to size a quarter inch piece of MDF with white laminate already on one side. These two pieces will make the surface of the router table and here I'm applying some contact cement. You apply this to both sides and let it dry completely and the instructions say to go around the outside an additional time. Here's how you apply the two pieces. You have to put those sticks in the way because they will bond instantly. Downward pressure is all it takes. I deliberately cut that top piece larger because when you apply those two surfaces, you don't get a second chance. A router with a flush trim bit cleans everything up really nicely. This two by three lumber is from my neighbor's shed. He let me have whatever I wanted. I ripped a whole bunch of nails out and as you can see they are warped and bowed so I decided to clean them up. Now two surfaces are at 90 degrees and you can see just how bad it's off. The table saw does the rest of the work. And now I've got clean looking lumber. Totally optional but I wanted to do it that way. Here's the router plate. I bought the version where you drill your own holes to attach the router. I won't do that on camera, just follow the instructions, it's pretty easy. Here I'm making a template because I'm going to use the router next. That's right, you have to use a router to make a router table. <laughs> the goal here is to remove just a little more material than the thickness of the router plate. The router bit I'm using has a bearing that rides along the template. What I'm making here is a ledge, so that center piece will be cut away, just revealing a lip around the inside. Here I'm preparing to use the jigsaw, and I'll just remove that center piece. Kind of overshot it there the first time, but that's okay. The center piece comes out, and there's that ledge fits in there pretty good. I added some screws so you can dial in the height of the router plate and get it perfect with the table surface. Oh yeah, perfect. These pieces of plywood will give additional strength to the router plate, ensuring it stays exactly where it's supposed to. Each corner of the router plate is attached to the table surface with screws, and you can see the screw holes are way too close to the edge. I wanted more material for the bolt to grab onto. The glue was probably not necessary, but I used it anyway. And then I drill out the holes, and this is now ready for the router plate to be installed. But first I work on a frame for the tabletop. Here I'm drilling some holes for some screws and my screws were a little too short so that's why I used the Forstner bit just to get them a little bit deeper. Add glue to one side, I clamp it good and then I drive the screws. This will add extra rigidity making sure the table surface stays dead flat forever. The legs are cut at a 5 degree angle and I use two powerful magnets to mark the location to make sure they're all the same size. And then it's on to attaching the legs. I drill some holes, add some wood glue, and attach them with screws. I 
I had this laying around my shop. I had glued two pieces of plywood together for a different project I decided not to make and thought they'd be great for the feet. They're a little bit longer than the legs on purpose. That will prevent the table from tipping over and they're meant to be clamped to a table surface. Here's how the router plate gets installed. And the final step is to add additional support beams to give the table surface additional rigidity. And it's done. I just love building indestructible accurate items that will last forever. Please give this video a like. I strongly recommend using a power strip to turn the router on and off. Mount it on the legs facing away from the front so you don't accidentally turn on the router. The fence will be a large piece of scrap lumber that's been milled flat. I know that looks ugly, but rest assured it is very accurate. Just clamp it to the table. Some optional things you might want to do is add a T-track to the table surface so you can use feather boards. This table will do 90% of everything I need done on a router table. However, I will one day purchase the floor standing Craig router table. It has a better fence system with some features that I will occasionally use. I plan to have both these tables in use in my shop. The one I made will probably be a pattern routing table. This table will last a lifetime and be super accurate the entire time. Thanks internet.